After identifying your patient and the need for endotracheal tube care, don personal protective equipment and raise the bed to a comfortable working height. Place a towel across the patient's chest to keep the gown from becoming soiled. Turn on the suction device and adjust the regulator to the appropriate setting. Perform hand hygiene and don gloves. Start by suctioning the patient's mouth and airway to remove excess secretions. Use a Yonkauer suction catheter to provide this care. Protect and secure the Yonkauer suction catheter, remove gloves, and perform hand hygiene. If you are using a commercially available securing device, remove it from its packaging and make sure the neck strap is in place and the Velcro strips are open. If tape is used to secure the device, prepare it at this time. Don gloves. With assistance holding the endotracheal tube in place, carefully remove the securing device and bite block. If tape is used, remove remaining adhesive from the patient's face at this time. Beginning on the side opposite the endotracheal tube, clean the patient's mouth, gums, and teeth. Use the Yonkauer suction catheter as needed to remove secretions. Note the centimeter endotracheal tube marking at the patient's lips or gums and carefully move the endotracheal tube to the other side of the mouth, making sure its depth remains the same. Clean the patient's mouth, gums, and teeth on this side of the mouth. Wash and dry the patient's face and neck as needed. For male patients, shave as needed. If tape is used, apply skin protectant as indicated.
Place the Velcro strips around the occipital region of the patient's head and pass the endotracheal tube through the opening of the device. Confirm that the endotracheal tube is at the correct depth by verifying the centimeter marking at the gums or lips. Attach the Velcro straps at the base of the patient's head, leaving a half inch of slack in the strap. Ensure that the tube is secure. It should not move forward from the patient's mouth or backward down the throat. Also, check for any pressure areas on the patient's mucosa or on the occipital region of the head. If tape is used to secure the device, place the long piece of tape underneath the patient's neck with the double-faced portion resting against the neck and extending from ear to ear. Secure one side of the tape to the patient's face over the lip to the endotracheal tube or from ear to nares for a nasal endotracheal tube. Tear the remaining tape in half lengthwise. Secure the bottom half of the tape across the upper lip or across the top of the nose. Wrap the top half of the tape around the tube at least twice to secure the endotracheal tube. Gently pull the other side of the tape that is around the patient's neck and secure it to the opposite side of the patient's face and the endotracheal tube. With the device secure and the endotracheal tube stabilized, reattach the suction source to the inline suction catheter and assess your patient for the need to suction the airway. Remove the towel from the patient's chest. Remove your gloves and any other personal protective equipment. Perform hand hygiene. Document the appropriate information, including time of the procedure, type of suctioning performed, description of the secretions, including the amount, color, odor, and consistency, and your patient's response to the procedure. Perform hand hygiene, don clean gloves, and remove supplies used for the procedure. Continue to assess your patient for any changes as needed. Attach the suction catheter to the patient's ventilation port with your non-dominant hand and hold the device securely. With your dominant hand, advance the catheter within the enclosed sleeve and progressively push the catheter in while pulling the plastic sleeve back between your thumb and index finger. Advance the catheter until you meet resistance or the patient coughs. Then, apply suction for 10 to 15 seconds by intermittently pushing the suction control mechanism down while withdrawing the catheter. Unlike the single-use catheter, the closed inline catheter is usually not rotated due to the protective catheter sheath. To avoid obstructing airflow, withdraw the catheter completely. A black mark on the catheter indicates full withdrawal. Okay, the only thing I have to add to that is that in addition to clearing the airway um, of secretions, you might see suctioning done in order to get a specimen um, collected. 
what you really need to be aware of is that we only suction when necessary. Sometimes you see physicians write orders that say, you know, suction the patient every shift or PRN. It's really always PRN. Um, some patients need it, you know, every hour. Some patients need it every couple of hours. So it really depends on how many secretions um, the patient is producing. The thing that you absolutely need to do is pre-oxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen. And the reason why this is done is because when you suck all of the air out of your patient's airway, one of the first things you'll notice is they begin to throw off dysrhythmias. And what they don't tell you on, you know, SVU, um, you know, law and order, is that when the patient is strangled, what usually happens first is they go into a deadly arrhythmia like VTAC or VFib. And that's what really ultimately kills them. So the reason why we pre-oxygenate patients with oxygen is to prevent any arrhythmias from occurring. So you've seen um, suctioning, inline suctioning, and you also have had this um, in lab. And then afterwards, we oxygenate the patient. And the whole time you're watching the patient as well as the monitor, um, if they're on one, which most likely if they're in a vent, um, they're going to be on a monitor because they're in an ICU.